Okay, here we go. Part four of projects, new projects, run the shop, whatever it's called. And you see over there, that's all the stuff it takes to make silicone prosthetics. So let's take a look at it. So of course, here we have the molds and what I've done is I've prepped them with a little bit of um, Vaseline. You put a little bit of Vaseline on it. They have another name for it. Uh, the company that makes this mold life. It's made in England, as you can tell by the way the spelling is. It's called Super Baldies. Super Baldies uh, thins with 99% isopropyl alcohol. And it's for encapsulating prosthetics and making ball caps and all kinds of stuff. Very expensive. It's about $50 for this. At least it was when I bought this. Um, and this is what encapsulates the silicone because nothing will stick to silicone. But when these two materials are damp and they come together, they stick together. That's the big secret that no one wants me to tell you for some reason. But basically... Um, yeah, you put, you airbrush in like three layers, four layers of, of the Baldi's material, sort of a plastic material. And then um, that fourth layer you put in, or third layer, depending on how thick you want the Baldi's to be, uh, you put in wet and you mix your silicone and pour it in before it dries all the way. And trust me, it will bond to that stuff. I don't know why, but it does. Probably on the, Microscopic level, it uh, the two materials mingle. That's the best I can tell you. So here's the uh, silicone pigments I will use. These are actually pigments for silicone I got from Berman Industries. I've had these for a while. This is to make my flesh tone to add to the silicone when I mix it. Here is the silicone, the part B, the part A. There are many forms of this on the internet. This mixes 50-50, I believe. Last time I used it, that's what it said. So mix one A, one mix ratio, one A to one B. That's it, one to one. So, uh, which makes it really easy. We don't need much of this. I don't have much of it, but uh, yeah. So uh, again, the process is put your Vaseline in, put three layers of this in. Let them, let them dry between layers about 10 minutes. Uh, it's called epoxy parafilm. Um, and then once you've got three layers over the top of your Vaseline, uh, your Baldi's is not gonna stick to the mold and it's gonna release and it'll stay stuck to the silicone. So let's get going. Okay, so what I've done, up, but the fuck, oh, oh, so loud. Okay, I can be loud too. This is uh, bald, Super Baldi's mixed and thinned, you can see, with 99% alcohol. I'm gonna put it through an air brush. And I'm gonna put three coats on this. And the fourth one will be, excuse the mess, it's bad. It's all gonna get cleaned up at the end of the year. Um, we're gonna put that on here. Can I do this with one hand? I know there's a drum roll out there somewhere. Um, no. So I set you down. There we go. Uh, well, it's, uh, I gotta get it to come out of the airbrush, which is always a good trick. Oh, it's coming out. I can see it. And I can see the cobweb starting to form. You see that? That tells me I've got a good mix. So we're gonna, we're gonna spray this on. And I mostly only need it where the prosthetic's gonna be because if the silicone comes out, um, and gets onto the stone. Silicone gets on this stone. Silicone doesn't stick to anything. It just doesn't. Except itself. It's important to remember that. Now you want to get it around these edges here. Because you don't want it to stick there. So and well actually no, you really don't care about that either. You want to think about it. Okay, so that's one coat. 
We're gonna do three more of these. The last one will be done and then we'll pour the uh, silicone. So here we have 25 grams of A, uh, uh, B, and 25 grams of A. Now the A, I put the pigment in first and I put in a little bit, it's very opaque, but when it mixes with this, it'll be a little bit more translucent. I hope. I think I went a little too heavy, and I added a little bit of red in there too. But I'm trying to get it to match to, to uh, a flesh color like me. See, it's pretty close. Yeah. So uh, we're going to mix these two together. We got about 20 minutes of work time. So before I do that, I'm going to spray on another coat of that stuff, and I'm going to get it nice and wet. up this and pour it in. The other thing I'm going to add is some of this stuff. This is deadener. The more you add to, of this to this mix, the do I have to have the dust in there too? I guess that's a prerequisite to having a good prosthetic. Really? Seriously? Okay, so uh, I'm going to pour this in and usually you want to mix it in like, oh, 100% to 100% of your mix. Uh, which gives you a lot more material uh, to work with. It'll also make it more translucent, but it makes the prosthetic softer. And I'm just basically going to eyeball this in because these really don't have to be that soft. Now I have to mix this. Okay, so we're pouring this stuff in. Um, I'm, I'm moving fast because uh, I just got to get the stuff in before it'll... Sits up. I want it all over the place. I wish I didn't have that little red dot there, but I do. This looks pretty good here. Now let's uh, see if I can get rid of that red dot. Where did it go? Okay. And I am recording Mary. And I'm just gonna close this up. So, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. As soon as I scoop some of this back up. There we go. And that takes care of that one, like that. So both of these are shut, and we're gonna let these stay shut for about 30 minutes or more and open them up, and we should have prosthetics. Okay, I just opened this mold and it came apart very easy. These really are soft. I mean, they're squishy, squishy soft. And you can see that the capsulation worked really well. They're coming right off. But I kind of want to leave them sit here a while longer before I open, open them any further. I might be able to get a piece of this off there and show you uh, how, how it is in, in this area here. I'm leaving this till maybe tomorrow because, boy, it's soft. I think I put too much deadener in it. Well, not too much, but uh, enough. Oh yeah, look, that that's just really nice. It's stretching right out the way it should. Um, and you see that it holds its shape. It goes back. It's, it's it's very, very soft. This will move with the face very well. Let me get that up. There you can see how beautifully that came out. So uh, we got some good prosthetics here and I'm going to let them sit for a bit. I'll, let's, just so you can see how this works, um, let me lift this one up a bit. You can see under it. You can see right there how good the edge is. Nice and thin. That is all super baldies uh, predominantly so they can be um, blended off really well and you can see where the actual prosthetic itself is. 
but this will be a little firmer tomorrow, so I'm gonna leave it. We're gonna go ahead and open this one up. Um, basically, all I had to do was this. It's a little prying action. Let me find an opening that's there. I think this will do it. Just, that's all it took. It didn't take much. So, uh, and then really just, just its own weight will start to pull it apart. You see how easily it lifts off. You can see how it's coming away right there. So, um, accidentally hit the button, it stops it all. Oh yeah. Very nice. Came off very clean. So I believe we have two good prosthetics here for Halloween night. You can see that, uh, yeah, you can see where the encapsulated baldies, the baldies, this is the actual baldies right there. I'm gonna powder this. I'm gonna see some powder. And we're gonna let this sit for a while. Um, I'm probably gonna open these tomorrow because what I can see here in really good shape. That little pucker right there on the edge there, that's just gonna get melted away anyway. And you can see how it stretched right back out. So, wow, these came out super good. Uh, I'd love to pull them out all the way and show you, but we'll do that tomorrow. So that'll be part four, I suppose. So yeah, that's how you make prosthetics. I mean, uh, with silicone and basically you would just just remove this completely all the way and this will all peel out and you'll see the sculpture and everything I did and you can see just how thin the clay was so these are just going to be barely on the face and blended off with the alcohol anyway so that's how we do that and uh, you got to see it all happen and um, I'm gonna go walk my dogs now and I hope you enjoyed part see is this this is part four <laughs> okay <laughs>